In this video, I'll demonstrate how to take raw scores using SPSS and transform them into standardized scores. Z scores are the primary type of standardized score that you'd encounter, but I also want to show you how to do T scores. You know, T scores are a little bit different because T scores are typically set up so that the mean is 50 and a standard deviation is 10, uh, whereas Z scores, the mean is 0 and the standard deviation is 1. Uh, Z scores represent how far an individual raw score is from its mean in standard deviation units. And if we look at the formula for uh, uh, Z scores, we can see it right here, and for T scores underneath. So the, the uh, typical formula that you have for a Z score uses the population symbols for mean, that's in the numerator, that's mu, this symbol right here, and sigma for the standard deviation, the population standard deviation. Now there is a little bit of a difference that you should know about in SPSS because SPSS does not use the formula for the population standard deviation. Instead it uses this formula for the sample standard deviation because what we're doing is we're using the sample data that we have here. There is no way to substitute the population formula for the standard deviation. The difference in the formulas for standard deviation, whether you're using population or sample versions, is that the denominator of the standard deviation formula uses n in the population version and n minus 1 in the sample version. There's no way to force SPSS to use the population standard deviation formula. Um, and I went on the um, SPSS listserv a number of years ago and asked them about it uh, and the uh, staffers at uh, SPSS responded that it would be uh, confusing to users to have two different types of standard deviation for this function. Instead what you'd have to do is you'd have to type out your own commands. So we don't really need to do that. I'm just going to show you how to use the um, ready to go buttons in SPSS to get the uh, uh, the Z scores using the raw scores and then transform them into T scores using this formula down here uh, where a T score equals uh, 10 times the Z score plus 50 and that's going to create a new distribution um, a new standard distribution where the T scores uh, have a standard deviation of 10 and a mean of 50. You can also see I've got a couple of computations here and that's for the first data point up here, this value of 2 for variable x. So let's go away from the formulas and let's get, just go into SPSS and I'll demonstrate. Now we've got two different variables set up here, variable x and variable y. Uh, in case you need to know, uh, you know where to uh, put your labels for variables, it's over here in variable view. And I just created these variables and put in a um, you know, really small data set. So it's just six data points on variable X and variable Y. You can imagine that these are six people who um, give us responses on these two different variables that we're interested in. So let's compute the Z scores. We go to analyze descriptives descriptives using that pathway. And we're going to take both of these variables over, we can, uh, uh, if you hold down the control or shift key while highlighting these, you can uh, move multiple variables. And I've got both of my variables now on the right hand side, but before I hit OK, click this button right here that says save standardized values as variables. And it's going to transform them automatically into Z scores. And that Z score formula is using the sample standard deviation instead of the population standard deviation. Again, I don't think that's anything for us to worry about here. We're just concerned with this sample and turning this sample into z-scores. So we click OK. You can ignore the um, descriptive statistics that come up in the output. We go back to our data window and we can see that these scores are automatically created. Now I just want to check to make sure with this first value because I computed the z-score using my formula and uh, that's the value, negative 1.118, and we can see that that's a match 
at the third decimal point. I did that using a calculator. And this is the computation um, using the sample standard deviation here, which is the sum of squares divided by n minus 1, and then take the square root. All right, so far so good. And uh, doing it as a batch is nice because uh, we can see that it, uh, you know, all of them are done at the same time. I just want to check something. Let's run descriptive statistics on the z-scores. Did it on the wrong one. Let's try that again. I'm trying to move them back. Here we go. And so I'll take my z-score for variable x and z-score for variable y. I have to undo this or it's going to do a z-score again. And you can see that the mean is 0, standard deviation is 1. That is the nature of z-scores. So once I've transformed these scores into z-scores, if I run the descriptive stats on the z-scores, we can see that the mean is exactly 0, as it should be, and the standard deviation is 1, as it should be. So that's just a, um, kind of an illustration that everything is working properly. All right, now let me go back in here. Uh, let me, actually, let me get rid of this duplicate z-score for each variable, because I ran it twice by accident. The next thing I want to do is I want to turn these into t-scores, where t-scores represent the same distribution where you have a mean of 50 and a standard deviation of 10. So to do this, there's no easy command button in SPSS. I'm going to have to uh, transform the data and compute my own new variable. So I'll show you how to do this. You can use this to compute any new variable using existing data in your data file. So this is a good tool to have. Um, I'm going to do this once for variable x and then again for variable y. I want my new variable to be tx for the t-score for variable x and then I'll do it again for ty. Um, and then I need to follow the formula where a t-score is the z-score times 10 plus 50. Uh, so I take my z-score for variable x right here, pull it over using the button, and I use the asterisk on this keypad. The asterisk is the multiplication function. All of these are arithmetic operators in here. And then you have the numeric keyboard. So I use this button, and this is my mathematical expression uh, in the window above. Now it's going to take the z-score for variable x and multiply it by some value. I need to type in that value, so I type in the number 10. And then I use the addition sign right here and 50. It's going to follow the order of operations, and as we know from PEMDAS, multiplication be, uh, comes before addition or subtraction. If we had reversed these, if we did 50 plus z-score times 10, then we would need to put parentheses around it like this. But the parentheses here will not change the order of operations. It's going to run the same way anyway, so I'm just going to take those back off. Okay, so it, once I run this, it's going to create a new variable in my data file. It's going to put it right here, and it's going to be called tx. So I run it, the output window pops up, it just tells us that something happened, and then over here we can see the values. Now I can check that with my math down here, and you can see that my computation matches the computation here, 38.82, and then uh, using the formula by hand, using a calculator, I get 38.12. If you're using a calculator to do this, make sure that you use that negative sign correctly. 10 times a negative value uh, of 1.118 plus 50. Uh, it's got to be 38.82. All right, so that's the t-score for variable x. And now I'm going to create a t-score for variable y. Uh, after that, I'm going to correlate them. So. I 
change the target variable expression to uh, ty and I'm going to take out this variable you can just highlight it and use the the button here to move it and then I'm going to take this z score variable y and in brackets that's what you're going to see when you actually move it over z var y like that it's kind of uh, interesting that you see the full typed out expression here but you only see the part that's in brackets once you move it over and that's basically it we're ready to go we hit OK go back to the data file and you can see that I've got my scores now for the T scores for a variable Y now I just want to prove that the correlation of the raw scores of X and Y will equal the correlation of the Z scores for X and Y which will equal the correlation of the T scores for X and Y and that will demonstrate that what we're looking at is exactly the same set of data expressed in three different ways raw scores standardized scores using the Z distribution and standardized scores using the T distribution I go to analyze correlate bivariate which is two variable and I I'm just going to bring over X and Y at the moment then I'll change them and I have my correlation of 0.619 it's a pretty large correlation of course it's artificial data um, the p-value is 0.19 that's the sig p-value it's not significant but so what it, you know it's just the numeric example and then the 6 represents the number of pairs of data the sample size um, each row is counted only once so we have six rows one two three four five six uh, and you can see also that it um, shows that correlation twice uh, these correlation tables in SPSS are, uh, provide mirror images along the diagonal each half of the, the top half is the same as the bottom half um, okay so remember that number 0.619 now I'm going to do the correlation of the Z scores take these out put in my Z scores and the Z scores have a correlation of 0.619 of course they have to because uh, transforming raw scores into Z scores it's a linear transformation of the data so the relationship of the data points remains the same even though the numbers change and then I'm going to do the same thing for T TX and TY and take these out and bring in my T scores and you can see that the T scores are also correlating across variable X and variable Y with a correlation of 0.619 and there's one last thing so I want to make sure that everything is working correctly in terms of the mean and standard deviation of my transform scores my T scores so I'm going to run the descriptive statistics on the T scores this time and what I anticipate is that the mean will be 50 and the standard deviation will be 10 for both variable X and variable Y I'm just going to check that and make sure and lo and behold in my descriptive statistics the mean is 50 and the standard deviation is 10 so now you know how to use the transform function to compute a new variable and use the numeric keypad here uh, to create a numeric expression there are a bunch of different things that you can do with this uh, function which I'll demonstrate in different videos and we've seen how to create z-scores and then turn those z-scores into t-scores. Thanks for watching.